Hello, my name is Noreen and I work at the Loch Ness Discovery Centre. Today I would like you to join with me and my work colleague Maeve as we look for mini beasts in our gardens. Hi, my name is Maeve and I work at Oxford Island as part of the education team. We do things like pond dipping, bird watching, as well as mini beast hunts, which is what I want to do with you today. Mini beasts are small creatures that do not have bones inside their bodies like we do. Scientists call this group of creatures invertebrates, which really means without a backbone. This is a good time of the year to find mini beasts in our gardens. Invertebrates are cold blooded creatures and are only as warm as the air around them. That is why there are more of them about in the spring and summer. Mini beasts are very important in our world as they help dead leaves and wood to rot. They help to keep the soil healthy. They also help in the pollination of flowers and provide important links in the food chain. I'm going to have a good look around my garden and see what little creatures I can find and try to help you identify them. And then you can go do the same in your own garden at home. We will be looking under pieces of wood and stones, under plant pots and on leaves and on flowers. Now the great thing about these creatures is that because they're so small and can't really move too far, that gives us a great opportunity to get a good close-up look at them. But because they are so small and can be quite delicate, we must take great care when we're moving things around. So I've been having a look in the soil below the hedge behind me and I found a really long centipede. Some other places in your garden that you can look for centipedes and millipedes would be under flower pots and under rocks or dead wood. Centipedes and millipedes have lots of small parts on their body called segments and along these they have lots and lots of legs coming out of them. Centipedes can have anywhere between 15 and 177 pairs of legs and millipedes have even more. They can have up to 200 pairs of legs. So this helps them to move pretty quickly. And because they have so many, they're actually able to move backwards just as quickly as they can move forwards. Well, you can tell whether it's a centipede or a millipede by looking at their legs. Centipedes have one pair of legs per body segment, so one at each side. And millipedes have two pairs per segment. As well as that, Millipedes legs usually look more tucked under their body and face downwards, whereas centipedes legs usually are flat and stick out from either side of their body. Centipedes are much faster than millipedes, which is probably because they are hunters. They eat other small creatures such as spiders, slugs and worms. They are carnivores. They have two fangs at the front of their body that releases poison and they use them to capture their prey. Millipedes don't need to move just as fast as they feed on plants. Centipedes and millipedes can't really see too well because they spend most of their time in the dark. So they use two antennae on top of their head to feel their way around. See if you can find any centipedes or millipedes in your garden. I've been able to find a slug and some snails. They both like to live in cool, shady places and will hide away from strong sunlight. It is usually easier to find slugs and snails after it has been raining. Slugs and snails are nocturnal and are more active at night time when there are fewer predators and the temperatures are cooler. As they move, they leave a trail of slime behind them, so you can usually tell where a slug or a snail has been. They have a mouth at the front of their body which has lots of tiny little teeth. They use these teeth to scrape their food. Slugs and snails eat lots of different things including grass, leaves and even dead animals. Slugs and snails are eaten by birds and hedgehogs. One of my favourite types of mini beasts is the woodlouse, also known as slaters or pill bugs and they're pretty cool because they're actually part of a bigger group called crustaceans and this means that they're actually more closely related to crabs and lobsters than they are to insects. Woodlice have seven pairs of legs, so 14 in total. See if you can count them when you find some. Now you're likely to find these guys under things like flower pots or plant pots or damp decaying wood that's lying around. Woodlice are one of nature's great recyclers. 
and they will eat things like dead wood, dead leaves, fungi, and sometimes even their own poo. If wood lice stay out in the sun too long, it can dry them out. So you tend to find them hiding in dark damp places during the day. And then they come out at night when the temperature is a little bit lower. So this means that they're nocturnal. So you know how we have a skeleton inside our body? Well, wood lice have one on the outside called an exoskeleton. This is a hard outer shell that protects their soft body underneath. And can you see all of the little segments that overlap on their body? Well, this helps them to bend and move. And one type of wood louse called a pill wood louse or a roly poly can actually curl up fully into a little ball when it's in danger. And this helps keep it safe. On warm sunny days like today, there are lots of flying insects in the garden. Even a few flowers will attract bees, hoverflies and butterflies. These little purple flowers are called chives and bumblebees love them. It is easy to spot bumblebees in the garden as they are big and fluffy and usually black and yellow. These bumblebees are moving from one flower to another in search of nectar. They will visit lots of different types of plants and if you look closely you might be able to see their long tongues and their large eyes. On the legs of some you will be able to see the pollen baskets, loaded with yellow or orange pollen that the bees will bring back to their nest. Bees are important pollinators and as they move from one flower to another, grains of pollen stick to their bodies. When the bees visit the next flower, the grains of pollen fall off. Bees are very important pollinators and without them we wouldn't have apples, tomatoes or lots of other types of fruit. Another many bees that I've found under some plant pots is a beetle. Beetles are a very commonly found insect and there are over 4,000 species of them in the UK. But they aren't just all black. They come in a wide range of colours, shapes and sizes. Ladybirds, for example, are a type of beetle and they have bright colours like red and yellow with different patterns with spots and stripes. Their bright colours act as a warning for predators that they don't taste very good. But if something does try to eat them, like a bird or other animal, they release a really horrible tasting fluid from their legs to make them go away. Ladybirds might look very cute, but they're actually great predators. Both the adults and the larvae eat a huge number of little green flies called aphids, as well as other small insects. This is great for gardeners, because aphids damage a lot of their nice plants. Some beetles eat other small mini beasts, while others eat things like leaves or wood, and some even eat dung, and some species will eat the pollen and nectar from flowers. These types of beetles are pollinators, meaning they transfer pollen from one flower to another, which then helps more flowers to grow. As they're an insect, they have six legs. Beetles also have two pairs of wings. The outer pair is hard and is used like a shield to protect the pair underneath, which they use for flying. But usually a lot of them just stay on the ground and don't fly too much. You might find them under logs or dead leaves or under some flower pots where it's dark and damp. So go out and see if you can find any beetles in your garden. Two different types of butterfly have been visiting these pink flowers today. This is the large white butterfly. As you can see, it is mostly white and has black tips to its wings. This butterfly will use its long tongue to drink the nectar from inside the flower. The large white butterfly lays lots of little yellow eggs on plants like cabbages and nasturtiums. The little caterpillars that hatch out will eat the leaves and grow very fast. This butterfly is a small tortoise shell. These butterflies are around for most of the summer and will visit lots of different types of flower. They have brightly coloured wings and will keep them open when they are resting. We hope that you have enjoyed finding out about some of the mini beasts that you might find in your garden. We can help all our mini beasts by creating places for them to hide and shelter and by leaving a little corner of the garden where the grass is a bit longer. Growing some flowers will help all the bees and butterflies and the other flying insects that might visit from time to time. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoy doing your own mini beast hunt at home.